Okay. It says we are live. Um, so thank you for anyone who's watching this. I don't know if it's actually live yet. I know it takes a minute, but um, welcome. I'm Elizabeth. This is Sav from Riveting Reads, and welcome to the Midnight Society Book Club live show discussion of The Protege by Jody German. Um, Hi, y'all. Welcome. So I just finished this like two days ago. Uh, actually, yesterday. I started on Friday. I read it Friday and Saturday. And so I feel like it's nice and fresh. I feel good good about that. Yeah, I um, just I finished it last night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. My do- I was just going to say my dags, my dogs are here, so they may randomly freak out, uh, hear, see a squirrel, and start barking. So prepare yourself. They'll probably scare me. Hi, y'all. Oh, good, good, good. So um, this is Sav. Her um, channel is Riveting Reads. And that is linked down below. Go check her out. Go follow her if you're not already. And do you want to introduce yourself a little bit to? to yeah, the sure. Audience? I'm Sav. My channel's Riveting Reads. Um, I also have a book club called the Lights Out Book Club, and I had Elizabeth as my co-host last month for I have it right here. Such oh. pretty flowers. Um, it was really fun having her on, and it's a monthly book club horror thriller themed. Um, and on my channel, I do a lot of reading sprints. I really find those really fun. Um, but I also do just kind of typical book to be content. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Thank you for being here and for having me on your channel. Of course. A little swap. Yeah. I love when that happens. Super yeah. Fun. So I guess I will give a um, quick synopsis of what this is about. We are in, we're not in spoilers right now. Spoiler free. I will let y'all know when we start to talk about spoilers. So if you have not read this book, you're still good. I'll let you know. Um, So this is The Protégé by Jodi German. And the only reason I did finally realize how to say her last name because of the audiobook, thankfully. (laughs) (laughs) I listened to it on audio and in tandem at sometimes with the book. Um, but in this, we're following two point of views. It is a thriller and we're following Hannah Bryars, who is a forensic anthropologist at Mad River University in Northern California. And she is kind of quirky. She's not so great with interacting with people, um, but she's very skilled and very good at her job. She is like world renowned for her research in decomposition and identifying bodies, etc. We're also following Winter Jones, who is her protege. Winter Jones is her TA. She's one of her top students, one of her best students. And Winter is out for revenge, essentially. <laughs> uh, Winter has convinced Dr. Briars that she worships her, but in react in reality, she does not. And she's trying to take her down no matter what the cost. And so as we go, we find out way more about Winter's past, her connection with Dr. Briars. And it's got kind of like an kind of like an academia setting because we are in a school, but I would not classify this as dark academia. Uh, but I'm also really picky about what I <laughs> call dark academia. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I think that's the general vibe. If you are watching, let me know in the comments. Uh, Why don't you put a red heart if you read this and a blue heart if you did not read it, just so we can get an idea of who all is here. Thank you all. Okay. um, (laughs) So I read this like pretty quickly. It was a very fast read for me. I'm not going to say just yet what my what my rating is. I want to know who all in here has read this. It looks like we've got a few who have read it. Is the black heart, is that supposed to be? I know. I'm like, I think that's the blue heart. <laughs> it's showing oh, up on your end as black. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. I'm cool. assuming. I'm assuming. Nice. Well, it looks like at least a few of you have read this with us, so it's exciting. We're going to have, like, a little discussion. Yes. Um, okay, so at this point, 
Do you want to talk, you want to talk about um, our ratings? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I was saying before this, it's so hard for me to rate this book because I felt like there were so many elements I really, really liked. I like the dark academia element, but I wanted a little more of it. Like I was kind of, I would get little glimpses of it. Like when the campus was described and like, obviously when professors were being talked about and like politics within the university, but I wanted it to lean just like a little bit more into that. So I felt like that was a little bit of a missed opportunity for me. Um, and I will say that I felt like the reveal, it was interesting, but slightly underwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe why it was a little underwhelming was I wasn't really rooting for the person like doing the revenge. So winter, um, usually in revenge books, even if they're like a bad guy or kind of like a morally gray character, I want to feel a little bit more like attached to them and on their side. And I just didn't feel that way so much with winter. So when it was revealed, you know, like whatever happened at the end, I just wasn't as like interested. Yeah. I will say, um, also in the, if you have read it in the comments, go ahead and put your, um, your rating that you gave it as well. Um, in the descriptions on in the description on Goodreads, it said this was um, in the vein of Samantha Downing and mm -hmm. Lane Fargo. Both of those very much good for her type authors. So my expectation was that this was going to be a good for her book, and I don't think it necessarily qualifies as that. But I do get the reference from like the school setting and the kind of professors I see they never learn. I want to see what's the Samantha Downing one. No good. Oh, um, for your own good, I think. For your, yeah, that's it. For your own good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I see that. But yeah, like you were saying, I was expecting to identify more with the person out for revenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I, I did not. Yeah. See, I'm trying to think of like a star rating. Like I'll probably average on a three star because I did like fly through this book and I was entertained and I wanted to know what was going to happen. I listened on audiobook and I probably would have finished it mostly in one setting or in one sitting if I hadn't been like needing to go to bed. Um, but yeah, I just love like they never learn so much. It's like one of my favorite books of all time that it's hard when a book kind of is drawing like a ton of inspiration from it, but doesn't live up to it. So mm -hmm. that was kind of like some of my general thoughts. Yeah. I think I am like going to give it the same, actually. I think a three star, oh, really? me, although it feels harsh because I did like this. And there were so many yeah. things I really liked about this. I, I immediately, when I read this description, thought of Temperance Brennan from Bones. Uh, have you watched Bones before? I haven't, but I need to. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, know, I need to. I love Bones. Um, and she is almost this exact character. Like she's a forensic anthropologist. Mm -hmm. She is socially awkward and she's very straightforward and in your face, um, no social filter whatsoever. And so maybe I was a little bit biased going into this because I wanted, um, I wanted her to be a little bit nerdier, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, like on Bones, it's a TV show. We don't get like her inner thoughts and stuff. And so I don't know how that exactly could have been portrayed like in your head as far as like the audio narrator while the audio narrators both did really really well um I wanted that that choice of how to portray Hannah I wanted her to be just a little bit more weird and yeah like, yeah um, I totally agree but I love I loved her I loved her character so much and mm -hmm. I was confused throughout because I was like okay I'm rooting for Hannah and I, so I was like, why am I supposed to be rooting for winter? Like, yeah. what's going on here? It was really fast paced. I yeah. like you, I went through this super quickly. Mm -hmm. And then um, there was actually more romance in here than I yes. anticipated. Which is another reason why I was like, not enjoying it quite as much as I feel like I could have. Like, I wanted more like, <laughs> violence I guess like I wanted murder like left and right and there was a lot of focus on romance and also like you were saying with the main character like she talks about how she's socially awkward and how people like refer to it but 
you see her in these social situations. And I mean, yeah, like sometimes she does say some like kind of quirkier stuff, but it's not to the level that I would like expect with how everybody is like describing her. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Also, like, I don't feel like she should have been embarrassed by things like she was very much like when certain things started to go wrong um, and and Winter was plotting against her. Um, she was like, I'm just so embarrassed. And I don't feel like she should have been embarrassed that easily. Like she should have yeah. been like, Harry, again, like I'm biased towards Temperance Brennan because she was just like such a she's just such a, such a strong character. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see here. Felt like the book got more interesting in the second half. First half felt very boring. I was actually like hooked from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I, I didn't, I liked the second half, but yeah, I felt like this was well written and it was a fun read and I liked the characters, but it's just not going to stay, stay with me for very long, which is why I think I'm giving it three stars because I, it's not one that stands out. It's kind of like your average thriller. And at the same time, I feel bad saying that because I did like it. And actually, I, know. I agree with you. Hannah should have been smarter. Hannah, I mean, I thought she was pretty smart. There was a lot of like bone talk. Like, yeah. What certain bones were called. And she was really turned on by. The I know. I was like, I have absolutely no idea what she's saying, but cool. <laughs> Someone's skull and stuff. Uh, I hated the romance. I actually didn't mind that. Let's see what it's just saying. The knowledge of all the bones was cool, and it was a quick, easy read, but for sure, feeling it is an average thriller mystery, and now I really need to read Samantha Downing and Lane Fargo. Uh, yeah, you do, Jess. You would love those. <laughs> Actually, I didn't rate um, They Never Learned super, like as high as most people do, but I still really mm -hmm. liked it. Yeah, no, I, I think I heard a few people like not being obsessed with it. Like, I don't think Ashley was like obsessed either. Yeah. Oh, I know <laughs> Beth didn't like it. Mm. But maybe Ashley didn't too. I don't remember. Um, it's hard to remember all everybody's rating. I, but, just, yeah. I just saw the, I thought the twist was way too early in that one. And oh, then yeah. there was a kind of twist in the end. And I was like, eh, rah, rah. <laughs> I, saw that, I saw that one coming from a mile away. Let's yeah. see. Sort of enjoyed the romance with Lynch, but it was ruined by cringy dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> I kissed his coronal suture, his obicularis oculi twitched. How do you even remember that? You must have the book in front of you, Leslie. There's no I way know. I can that <laughs> it felt yeah the romance to me felt cringe and then there's something that happens later on that I can't say it's like a spoiler but I was like what the heck like it made no sense to me but we can talk about that later okay. um yeah I don't want to spoil anything I think the author was really good at creating a tense mood and that kept me interested, but the execution of the plot kept falling short every time it could have gotten crazy and really fun. I can see that for sure. I did not get cringed by the, the romance. I, I just thought these were two like weirdos. And so <laughs> it's weird because he, well, yeah, I don't know how much I should go into it. I know it's hard. It's <laughs> Even when uh, I was explaining my overall thoughts, I was like, I hope I'm not spoiling anything. It's just hard to know, like, what not to say. Unless I said she's in medicine, so she knows. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Like, also, there wasn't any, like, it's not saying anything. And I know, like, it doesn't have to. Like, it's a work of fiction. It's a thriller. It's a story. But I, that's what, that's what um, makes my ratings go up as if it's if it's saying something on top of that yeah I, I like I think it did what it was trying to do but I don't think it had really anything to say outside of that um yeah. but I did love that it was dual point of view because each yeah. voice was very distinctive mm -hmm. and you definitely like Dr. Dr. Breyer's won me over without a doubt. But then Winter, I just feel like she was a really interesting character too. Like a little bit twisted and a little bit like yeah. 
a little bit like couple bolts loose up there that she just like went this far. Yeah. I feel like pretty early on there's stuff that's alluded to in her childhood. And I mm-hmm. feel like I wanted a little bit more, I don't know if like a flashback would have been good, but a little bit more insight into it. Um, oh, yeah, that's interesting. It might have, that might have been, yeah. Because as far as the twist, like you kind of know, mm-hmm. you know a little bit about her motives and you learn a little bit more as you go along. And then finally towards the end, um, we find out why. And there's this kind of like evil villain um, monologue at the end. But it's funny because she actually like points out that it's an evil villain monologue. Yeah. (laughs) I thought I thought that worked really well. Yeah. Uh, Because they're like, "Uh, I know like this is really cliche, but I feel like I just got to say. Yeah. I just feel like I have to do it. I like that. Um, Let's see here. So do you want to go ahead and get into some spoilers or do you have anything else non-spoilery that you want to touch on? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I'm looking at my notes. Um, Let me look at my notes. I don't have that many because I kind of flew through it. Um, I guess just overall stuff we basically said already, like it was really fast paced. I wasn't ever bored. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be a good thriller to read while you're traveling or something. Because it's like, you don't have to think too hard about it, but it's entertaining. Um, And I like the dual POVs, like you said. I thought it really pushed the story along. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't think I have anything else that we haven't said. Mm -hmm. Okay. I kind of wish I owned it physically because it's pretty. (laughs) It is pretty. (laughs) That I like, (laughs) that like dark academic. It's it's smaller than like a normal sized book. You know I mean? Oh, really? Yeah, like this is like a normal sized book. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. So it's like, you know, hmm. a little bit smaller, which makes sense why it was like kind of a quick read. Mm hmm. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and get into spoilers. Okay, oh, one thing that's not a spoiler um, that I really loved that they kept repeating is um, all war, all warfare is based on deception. And mm. that's kind of like the main theme of this, that like deception um, in order to get what she wanted and trying to play her cards right. I loved that winter um didn't nec- like she she didn't have so much ego that she she was smart enough to know to make people think or see her in a certain light in a certain way mm-hmm. without and like she would take the ego hit in order to further her um her purpose in like the long run she's like very it's very much a long game yeah. um and i liked that about her she was also very manipulative, like very socially smart because uh-huh, yes. she would like read the situation and know what the other person wanted and like how to get her way. So I feel like sometimes when characters are so like egotistical, they almost have this like social block where they don't necessarily interact in a way that like gets what they want. But I feel like what you said, like she knew how to get what she wanted and how to make herself seem like normal, like she didn't have ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. Okay, so can I can I create a banner right now? Am I, is that? Yeah, what? yeah, you can when you're live. <laughs> I love creating banners. I'm learning. Yay! Okay, so we're gonna go into spoilers. Okay. Um. So let's talk about the dynamic between. Um, Hannah and Joe and Hannah and Mick. Is it, it's Mick, right? With an M? I think so. I was listening, so I didn't ever see it written. Um, but yeah, Mick is the other professor mm-hmm. who like in the opening were introduced to him pretty much. I think right in the beginning of the book, he's like giving this presentation. Um, and very interesting. what do you say? He's the AI professor. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
I were you rooting for one? Like, you know, you I was kind of rooting for Joe. And okay, mm -hmm. I pictured Joe as oh, okay. I don't know if y'all are like if you're like a Bachelor Nation person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but I love that you are. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. I pictured Joe as grocery store Joe, who is if one I of Google that. Friends. Will he come up? <laughs> Yeah, he will. I guarantee he will. Hold on. Um, I'm dying. <laughs> and so he's just so adorable. And, and so I was kind of rooting for him. Grocery store Joe. Hold on. I'm trying to find. Oh, my God. Wait, you're so right. This guy looks exactly like what I would. You're right. You're right. Let me see if I could. I don't know if that float home. He does look like that guy. This is who I pictured. Okay, grocery store Joe. So adorable, so sweet. And so I was on his side at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know who I pictured um Mick as like Professor Xavier or something, because he was supposed to be bald. Yeah. Um, I really did have like a good idea of like what these characters looked like to me in my mind, though, which I guess is says something about the writing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought it was weird that like, well, okay, yeah, I was rooting for Joe, but then he like got over her immediately. It seemed like, and then just started dating her best friend. That's, yeah, I thought that was very weird and kind of pissed me off. <laughs> I was like, what? I kind of like, saw it coming. Yeah. So like, Joe is also one of the suspects along the way. So the things that start happening to her, first of all, she she goes somewhere out of her office and somebody shuts the door. So the keys get locked in. That, of course, was winter. She was in there and um, stole her keys, copied her keys, put a thing on her phone, spyware on her phone. But she's like, I know I didn't, I know I didn't shut that door because then I have to go ask for the master key and I look <laughs> silly and I know it. And so that was the first little thing that kind of set her off. After that, what happened? Mm. The, the, the dead body? Was that next? I think so. I think so. And then the classroom in, uh, incident. Oh, no, it was the, um, when she was giving her presentation. Oh, <laughs> Somebody did a deep fake uh, sex video of her and like put it up on her presentation, which was not real. And then she, this body that she was trying to identify for the police, who they thought it was probably one of their missing um, police officers, um, Winter then went and corroded the entire body and liquefied it so they couldn't figure out who it was after that someone broke into her house and joe had confessed his love or like tried to kiss her and she mm -hmm. shot him down and so when she went home she had confided in winter and so winter broke into her house or used the key that she had and took a picture of her and joe smashed the glass and left it on her pillow <laughs> And then she changed the dates on all the chemicals. And so there was an explosion in her classroom um, that really seriously injured one of the students whose father is also a professor there. So there's all these things happening. Meanwhile, her best friend, Amy, is the medical examiner, I think, for their town. Yeah, she works with her in some way. I think mm -hmm. you're right. And that's like her two best friends is Joe, who lives in her basement, which is not a basement, and Amy. Mm -hmm. And so Winter is systematically separating her from the people that she cares about. She is, um, Hannah is up for tenure. And so all of these things that are happening, like in her classroom and with the body are just making her look really, really bad. Mm -hmm. and so it's messing with her her career um there's just a there's a lot going on I liked each little thing how it like gained it like stepped it up a notch um yeah. there wasn't murder yeah oh I I guess I just wanted a murder scene in there like I don't know I just I wanted something well there was it. Lena is that her name or Layla 
Lena. Yeah, I guess like earlier on there was, yeah, I think her name was Layla. Um, yeah. I don't know. Because wasn't it implying that Winter killed the dead body? She did, was, yeah. So I don't know. I just wanted like more on that. Like what happened, you know? You know, know what? That would have been a good prologue. That scene yeah. where winter, yeah. but we don't know it's winter. Like yeah. a third person POV of like her killing somebody and then just trying to figure out why, how that's connected and who did it. That would have been good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see. Seems like the author wanted to do something with his wife by making her this mysterious, mm-hmm. beautiful woman. But maybe that got edited out. Oh, could be. Yeah, so Mick, she doesn't like him at the beginning. Mm -hmm. She thinks he's a manipulator because he's charismatic and he's good with his audience and he teaches artificial intelligence. And she kind of slowly develops this crush on him. But he is married to this very exotic, beautiful wife who I pictured as, I don't even know her name, Vanessa. What is the lady from... From um, say family. What's that TV, that sitcom TV show? It in the family? No. The like beautiful I'm Spanish such, lady. I'm such a bad person to ask with like <laughs> TV shows. I don't know. I don't watch that show, but I know who she is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and she seemed like she was kind of getting jealous. Like she noticed mm-hmm. the connection between Hannah and her husband. Sophia v- Vergara. Is mm. that it? That is exactly Probably. it. Every, like everyone's saying that. So. Oh, family. Yes. Yeah. So you all know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'm surprised she wasn't more involved in the plot, like getting involved with revenge or something. Somehow I thought that would have been cool. She very much conveniently was just exited scene left or exit of stage mm-hmm. left, you know? Um, yeah. They broke up and... And then it was like, oh, there is an opportunity for a romance yeah. here. And there was. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that seems like it, you're right. Uh, that should have gone somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and it didn't. Let's see. Why did Hannah blame both Joe and Mick for what was happening to her? But couldn't possibly fathom that winter had something to do with this uh yeah i don't know that makes sense but i think probably because uh winter was so good at like hero worshiping her or like making her think she worshiped her Mm -hmm. and being like i'm here for you like i'm a shoulder to lean on what's going on like that kind of stuff but she did kind of like cross boundaries. Like I would never show up if I was, I was a TA in college and I would never show up at my professor's house with like, well, yeah. a <laughs> I was well, a little bit like, yeah. What did you think about um, Winter's boyfriend, like calling and warning Dr. Breyers yeah. about Winter, like coming over? I didn't mind that. I didn't okay. mind it. Um, I think she did a decent job of setting up that Cameron was like, Winter's acting weird. Oh, and yeah. It sounded sure. like, um, hey, buddies. It sounded like she, like, after that, you find out that she kind of had an inkling um, based on that letter that Winter wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that, that phone call kind of confirmed it for her. Right. Uh, Cameron, though, was kind of filler, you know, he was filler for winter as well as for the book. Um, (laughs) That's very, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, because she was really just using him to hide, really, Mm because he was some good looking guy. And everybody else at Mad River, which I kept wanting to call Mad Dog the whole time I was (laughs) Mad River University. Um, By the way, is that a real place? I have no idea. I was thinking, like, I had that thought, and I was, like, working on my puzzle, and I was like, eh, I'll look it up later. And then I never I never thought to look it up. It I can see never heard of it. Mad River. What, do you remember? It's California. Was that? Yeah. 
Yeah, Mad River University. Probably I, not. Yeah, I'm guessing it's made up, which I like if it is. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Cameron Winter really just um used him. Because he was good looking and everyone else on the campus was she what she called granola guys that were like hippies and stuff. And he was this like preppy guy mm-hmm. and he caught the eye of a lot of people. And so it helped her blend into the background. And mm-hmm. she clearly manipulated him with her feminine wiles. Yeah. By the way, it doesn't look like it actually exists. Oh, cool. I tried oh, to look yeah. it up. Yeah. Um. What does this say? Hannah immediately moves in on him after learning that his wife just picked up and left. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was definitely convenient. That was a mm-hmm. plot convenience for sure. That yeah. his wife just left after they're already building this tension between them. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was almost implied that the wife was like suspecting that he was interested in her. And maybe that was like the last, mm-hmm. like, whatever the expression is. <laughs> I didn't last want to say the last string. <laughs> the last, <laughs> I don't know. But I would have thought that like, that would have been addressed when he was talking to her about it. He was just like, oh yeah, our marriage has been on the rocks forever. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I found it kind of, kind of weird. And how they were having a housewarming party and they'd been there for, he'd been teaching there for how, like, how many years? Like, years. Yeah. Oh, no, he just yeah. started. They'd been together for 12 years. Okay, no, that made sense. That actually does make sense. Oh, he did just start at the university? I think so. I think Oh, okay. I was remembering that wrong. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But that makes sense if he had just started because, like, she's just now noticing him. So, I think mm-hmm. you're right. That makes sense. Kate said, but Joe was supposed to be one of her best friends. Yeah, he was, I think he was. Mm-hmm. Her best friends. And I think that's why I was rooting for Joe is because he was so sweet. And he always like stuck with her and like social things. Mm-hmm. And he would explain to other people why mm-hmm. she is. Oh my God, my dogs are fighting. Hey! <laughs> they're playing. So they're going, Boy. So no. <laughs> no. They're so cute when they look at you. <laughs> you just go right back at it. I'm going to apologize in advance. Once they get going, they're like hardcore. Yeah. Um, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah. And he would like interject and be like, no, this is what she means. She's don't mm-hmm. like her. I thought they were really cute together. But you know, he's a musician, which is awesome. I mean, you got, I've dated way too many musicians. <laughs> that, that doesn't do it for me anymore like it used to I dated too many of them um, <laughs> but but yeah he was real sweet but Mick also like they have this like intelligence thing and she was so used to like uh, what's the word like hiding her actual thoughts and stuff and mm-hmm. covering them. Um, but then when Mick was like you don't have to do that with me like right. I know you I know you're weird. It's fine. I'm not gonna like you less because of that, which I like. Also, it was cool how she did get to like she said she wasn't feeling awkward. Oh. Like, the conversation flowed for hours and she couldn't remember the last time that had happened. So I mean, it makes sense why she ended up with him, but doesn't mean I'm happy about it. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like as the book went on, she became more uh, or better at expressing her emotions and better at social mm-hmm. situations. Yeah. Um, and Mick kind of pushed her to like stand up for herself, which I wanted her to like have that instinctually to be like, how mm-hmm. dare you, you know? But she right. kept like rationalizing it in her mind, like, no, it's going to look like I'm being defensive if I, if I say this. Mm-hmm. I wanted her to like, absolutely not. I am the like world renowned Hannah Bryant. Yes. I will not stand for this. Yeah. But it kind of took her a while to work up to that. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's see. The college journey. Yeah, that was um, Layla or... Was it Layla or Lena? I wrote Lila, but it's probably Layla. 
Oh, or... Layla. Oh, was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, I think I wrote Layla. Okay. Yeah, so mm-hmm. her and Winter have like this tryst, like this female, female tryst where she's mm-hmm. on camera. And I did like that, sh- that Le- Layla was like her intellectual um, equal. Mm-hmm. As they were, she's like, she was purposefully when they met, they met at this party and Winter is purposefully not giving anything away. She's mm-hmm. like, she's like, okay, I don't want her to know too much about me, but they see likeness in each other. Yeah. And immediately Layla's like, you and I are the same. We're ruthless. Yes. We will do whatever it takes to get what we want. And she's like, do you trust me? And they have, they share a kiss when they first meet. And then she wants her to tell the story of all this stuff that's going down with Dr. Breyers. Um, what did you think of, of Layla's character? I, I was okay with her. I didn't feel particularly strong one way or another. Um, I think that she was introduced kind of late. Like I was surprised how late into the story she was introduced, but I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah. What about they had kind of like this, how do you say, how do you say like a tete tete tete? Is that a, <laughs> this like back and forth where, yeah. you know, that I really liked. And then, yeah. um, oh, Kate says, how was college journalist the only one to figure out winter when the detective was stupid? Because the detective was a man and yeah. she's talking to him too. Yeah. She, she had, you know, he was thinking from, from down here, not up yeah. here. <laughs> he was manipulating her. She just reeled him right in. Um, mm. But yeah, she's the one, she's her winter's downfall. Layla was because she gets her Layla gets her winter to trust her and she still doesn't understand her motives for wanting to take Briars down and so she does a little bit of research finds out winter is not winter's real name or her first name yeah and so then she gets the dirt on winter her first name is Becca let's talk about her twin yeah I oh go ahead I'm always a little bit like when I hear the word twin in a thriller because I'm just like, where are you going to go with this? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because it can be kind of cliched. But um, so what we find out is that she had a twin sister and her twin was just like a good person. But also they were abused horrifically by their grandmother and Winter killed the grandmother was it or no? The sister killed the grandma. Which one killed her? So I think Winter. They like kind of work together, but I think Winter ultimately killed the grandmother. But the sister like took the fall for it or something, because of the evidence. It looked like Winter's sister killed her, and so mm-hmm. she took like the blame. That's how I read it. Yeah, I read it as Winter took the blame for it, or no? Her, her sister took the blame for Winter doing the killing uh, oh, okay but her sister um, ultimately took her own life yes right? mm-hmm. and so this entire time winter blames dr brennan for that because dr brennan was oh no dr briars <laughs> i know the name are a bit hard in this one <laughs> it is not bones separate it um dr briars because she oh elsa confessed to it Mary says. Mm, yeah. Um, but her did kill. Yeah, but Dr. Briars was the one that was like closing in on the case. And like, and so Winter thought that blamed her for her sister's um suicide because she was coming down on them with the these this evidence, which she didn't realize she's that they were so abused. So there is like a little bit of <sighs> You know, um, like you kind of understand why she is the way she is because she was so abused. Mm -hmm. Um, But also that her entire life, she's basically, she said she wanted to kill herself, but then she she came out of it and said, no, I want revenge. And so she Mm -hmm. shaped the entire rest of her life to be able to get back at Hannah. Yeah. 
And I don't even know if it was really elaborated on why Elsa, her sister, like, took the blame. She was just like, oh, that was, like, in her nature to, like, protect me. But it didn't really go into more of that. Like, I, I wanted more of what happened and, like, why it happened and maybe flashbacks. I don't know. I just like flashbacks. I feel like they give more of like a personal feeling like she's just talking about her sister but like how did they interact like what was their relationship I need an example of it you know I completely agree it's in this case in particular mm-hmm. um it made no sense that Layla was able to figure out winter but the police were clueless I mean I think he was just he didn't seem like too great of a detective anyway yeah and it was just that one guy yeah so. uh Winter's backstory needed more exposure, I think. I mean, there's no more to be able to root for her. Yeah. This, I don't think it was set up for us to root for her. No. I mean, I wasn't <laughs> the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Winter. Okay. Yeah. Winter killed the grandmother. I feel like Winter's childhood could be a thriller all itself. Oh, prequel. Mm-hmm. Could be a prequel. Yeah. Her childhood made me think of the girl next door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, that whole scene at Dr. Breyer's house where Winter brings a bottle of wine and she's like, I'm so sorry this is happening mm-hmm. to you. Let's talk. And yeah. She says she put sleeping pills in her wine. Was that supposed to kill her? The sleeping pills? Was it like so many? Or I don't it- know. I, I think she said something like this will definitely knock her out. So I don't know if it meant like was going to kill yeah. her. But I saw that like twist. Does it even count as a twist? Like coming. Like I knew that she was going to like she was faking it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it was very good job of making her sound like the acting. Yeah. No, she was. <laughs> she was a good actor. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, she pretends to be drugged records winter and winter lets it all spill out Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and then she's like ha i'm not really drugged (laughs) and then she gets her arrested right what is she yeah i mean i'm surprised that winter didn't see that coming like they paint her as like very very smart and then dr briars like leaves the room like if i were winters and i was as smart as she was being depicted as like i feel like i would have like guessed even if the person is acting like they're getting drugged i don't know you would think like it would be first of all i would never put a pill in someone's drink if i was trying to take them out like because there's no way like I, okay, being someone who's been really bad at taking pills my whole life, I have opened a lot of pills. I have crushed a lot of pills into beverages, and it's never not obvious. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's obvious. There, you can see it, and it floats. And so I was like, there's no way, unless it's like dissolves instantly, that you would not notice if somebody put something in your drink. It would have made more sense if she had like a syringe or something, and then all you would have to do is get close enough and just quickly like and then yeah. you're in control. Right. That, that that way of incapacitating someone else, I, I just don't find believable at all. Yeah. Unless, I mean, I don't know that much about, about it, <laughs> but... Yeah, you're like, I know so much. You're like, I've researched this so it would have to be tasteless and it would have to, yeah. and it would have to dissolve extremely quickly, which I've mm-hmm. never found to be true with any of the drugs that I've taken, but I don't know what yeah. other kind of drugs there are. I thought the ending was kind of a low point of the book. Like it just felt very predictable. And it was like a happily like, after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So she ends up, Winter ends up killing Layla and strangling her because she threatens to expose her. And she's like, bitch, you don't know me. You think you're ruthless. You're about to die. And that's really what what brings her down, is that that's the beginning and end for her because they find the body. And so she writes this note to... What is that? It's like to the newspapers? Oh, no, to to Layla or the journal, journalist... Mm -hmm. 
whoever the paper and she says some things that dr bryce said out loud like i'm gonna take note of who believes me now and i'll see who you know who's on my side after and then she says and to that reporter you just wait or something threatening yeah to try to blame that on her yeah and i think that is what tipped briars off yeah yeah and like amy was like this person is trying to set you up like something something's going on yeah when the body was disintegrated the detective was just like well hannah you suck <laughs> true it should be a crime scene yeah i think it went well hmm I mean, he was assuming, like, it was her just not doing her job well. It cannot be that easy to dissolve a body or that mm-hmm. quick. I mean, yeah. she's got, she clearly got a lot of chemicals, but in access yeah. to it. Yeah. And then it didn't end up even being the police officer, the body. Right? It was, someone, was else. someone else. She killed, yeah. The random person. Mm-hmm. Oh, she, also, she also killed the other guy who she went to elementary school with or whatever that was at her college. Oh. Was that the guy? Was that the body? Oh my gosh, was it? Actually, I feel like that might have been the body. Or like hinting. That would make that total sense body. if it was. I didn't I think it, I think that was. But I could be remembering wrong but that's what i got from it okay that does make sense if that's the mm-hmm. case that makes total sense yeah and she killed him with peanuts right because he had a peanut allergy yeah. yep which kind of underwhelming too but <laughs> <laughs> i mean God. it's brutal but i don't know uh let's see yeah she uh she started to unravel towards the yep. end Getting sloppy, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, that was the body. Jake Applebaum. Yeah, it was. Is okay. that his name? <laughs> Must be. Oh, my God. Good memory. I know. Ugh. Yeah. So, you know, I, I had fun with it. Like, as it went along, as the crimes got worse, it could have been darker. I think I yeah. was. I was just all in with Hannah. I loved her character. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like thrillers have been less dark lately. And I don't know if that's me just being like more desensitized. But I feel like when I used to read thrillers like a few years ago, they were just darker and more disturbing. Have you I noticed that? that too, to be honest, but I think part of that is being just desensitized and also having read so many at this point, um, yeah. it's a lot easier to pick up on where it's heading. True. Yeah. There are only so many twists. So when there's like a twist that like really hits me, it's like, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm craving that feeling. I'm craving yeah. it right now. It, that's what we're chasing. That's like constantly like the high that we're chasing is trying to find yeah. that like, oh, you got me. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And I think I am like, I've read so many thrillers that, you know, they do all start to blend together at a certain point. So, you know, I'm looking for something that's just a little bit different that just stands mm-hmm. out in its own way. And that's why I think I like having some kind of social commentary in there as well. I like it to say yeah. something. I just read oh. Find Her by Lisa Gardner before this one, and it was wild and gritty. Oh, okay. So I think the comparison was too harsh for me with this one. I needed chaos. <laughs> oh, I, I should get that. that down. I actually haven't read anything by Lisa Gardner. I haven't even. Yeah, thanks for that. I will uh, definitely add that to my TBR. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I read um, Mr. Mercedes this month by Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Have you read those that trilogy? Mm-mm. No. And I actually, like, I'm not a huge Stephen King, like, fan girl or anything. Some stuff I really like, some I don't. I've only read, like, mm-hmm. eight or ten of his books. Um, 
but I really liked that one. And it, it actually kind of reminded me of like a Karen Thriller uh, crime. Oh, really? or Karen Ooh. Slaughter, what did I say? Yeah, Karen I know who you meant. <laughs> Karen Slaughter, yeah. Um, because Ooh. the killer is really dark and gritty and the, it's very character driven. And yeah. I was actually really surprised by it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I think I should check that out. And I also just need to read more Karen Slaughter. I think that's part of my issue. I just need to. Oh my God. Yeah. What have you read by Karen Slaughter? I read Pretty Girls and I read The Good Daughter. So I need to start. Yeah. I love like Pretty Girls is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, And The Good Daughter I liked, but not as much as Pretty Girls. Like definitely not as much. I thought the opening of The Good Daughter was like the most suspenseful thing I've ever read. Uh, or one of them, like the opening was insane. Um, yes, kind of. It was a little bit too like legal thriller for me. Towards oh, the end. Okay. See, yeah. I like legal, I like legal stuff. I'm finding. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Brady. Oh yeah, Mr. Mercedes. Yeah, <laughs> I read the book of the most precious substance. Oh yeah, I'm glad you loved it. I loved that one too. Yeah, he's really great. This is the the killer oh, read this now. yeah i'm very like no hit or miss with king yeah same i i still love misery is my favorite of his mm-hmm. um but yeah this one it, it was just kind of like your oh it was hmm along the lines of like i don't know what author to compare it to as far as like it was yeah. good, maybe like a Lucy Foley or like mm-hmm. something that's like not incredibly dark, but like has the like the formula down, but like and good characters. But yeah, it was just it was good. Yeah, yeah. Like I liked it. Sorry, my phone just went off. I don't know if you'll. No, that. you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, no, I I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. I think this one was a really good like audiobook read for me mm-hmm. while I was doing something with like my hands like I was working on a puzzle and it was really enjoyable I didn't feel like I missed anything whereas some mysteries or thrillers you really have to like give your full attention um Mm -hmm. like look at and this one was nice to have on so yeah yeah it could have been like a beach raid or something like that where you're just kind of like chilling with it you don't have to think Mm -hmm. too much takes you for a little trip around this weird situation (laughs) And then yeah. it's what, uh, what was aggravating for you, Kate? Oh, book number th- book two won't stick with me. Definitely helped to be an audio play Call of Duty while listening to all. <laughs> oh, I could not have done that. <laughs> my uh, my multitasking when I read is like puzzles or chores usually i can't like watch something at the same time i've never been able to do that yeah uh i don't i'm not a gamer but my husband plays call of duty like literally every night and (laughs) um i don't know how you could listen to a book while doing that because he's constantly just yelling and screaming at people and like yeah on discord and all of that it's a very simple thing for him um but I'm not, I don't know much about it. Yeah. I've never done like even game apps, like while I'm playing. I've never tried that. Oh, I, know I, like, do- uh, I like Best Fiends when I'm listening. Ooh. Best Fiends, like, it's kind of like Candy Crush. Um, okay. It hooks you. I'm on level like 1700. Oh my God. I've been I playing it for that. years. That's awesome. <laughs> Me more Bones S type of protagonist. Yeah. Oh, ooh, that's tough. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I will say in Mr. Mercedes, there is a character in there, and it's not the protagonist. It's like a really awesome side character named Holly that is kind of Bones esque. Um, the maid by Nina Prose has mm-hmm. a really interesting um, main character that is just very socially awkward as well. I really liked her. I love Molly. Molly the maid. Such a good book. Yeah. Oh, Kate says the protege was just an aggravating book for me. I felt like the book was not believable. That's, you know, you are entitled to that. And I totally respect that. Um, And I get it. I don't think 
I think I was a little bit like biased towards it going in. Mm -hmm. um, I would have probably liked to have like a, the kind of story that is thought provoking that may, like you want to talk about instead of just dissecting like what happened when you, the kind of yeah. book that, like leaves you thinking, you know, that's what yeah. I prefer for like a book club, my book club picks. I'm gonna have to start thinking about that more. It's so hard choosing book club picks though. Like you just, sometimes you literally have no idea until you read it. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, especially if you haven't read from that author before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, skip Mo. Do chores. Might need to check out Best Fiends. Oh yeah. Candy Crush made me mad a while back. <laughs> I never <laughs> seen Candy Crush, so I don't know. But uh, I am, yeah, I'm obsessed with Best Fiends. I usually either do that or I, I clean um or a lot of times I'll make my thumbnails like for my oh, video yeah. I'll just get on procreate and like mess around with thumbnails and like or like graphics and stuff that's always fun because yeah. then I feel like I'm being doubly productive and it doesn't take yeah. like thought because you're just like oh that's pretty mm -hmm. yeah super excited for your next book club pick ah yeah so the next next month we are going to be reading um the haunting of alejandra by v castro um so i have not read from that author before but i've heard good things mm -hmm. so i am excited for that one yeah the um, cover of that one is beautiful too oh my gosh the cover is so beautiful what what are you reading next month for your book club? I'm reading Pinata by Leopold Gout, I think is how you say the author's yeah. last name. It's I'm always unsure. <laughs> um oh, but good. it's a it's a possession story. The cover is actually really, really cool. Um have you seen the cover? Yes. I actually have that one on script, so maybe I'll try to get that done this Ooh. month participate yeah. or like a, in the chat at your live show it would be fun let me pull up the cover um right here it's like really creepy looking and it's on but, the screen yeah i'm excited for it mm. cool well i think uh we've pretty much covered everything it's been about an hour that seems about right nice. yeah. um anything else you want to touch on or say do you have any um videos coming out that you want to call attention to or anything before we go? Um, I am doing my first ever unhaul coming out. <laughs> so that kind of made me nervous. <laughs> I like, I'm not a huge, I don't know. I just don't usually unhaul books. It's kind of scary. So that's coming out. Um, I have to edit it today. And then I just put out my May TBR, which I'm participating in Escape the Readathon, which is this really big readathon that's happening. Um, it's team based and it's a competitive readathon. And the goal of it is to try to escape a haunted house. So there's four different teams and you work together and try to complete prompts and unlock doors. And it's very, very involved. So if anybody's interested in that, um, it's run by Books with Lexi. And in my TBR, there's a link to her video. And it's it's going to be really fun. So Cool. That does sound like fun. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Forensic Anthropology, William Maple's memoir, Dead Men Do Tell Tales, is really good. Interesting. Ironically, the same has the same title as Hannah's memoir. Hmm. She, yes, she did mention that. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Goes to her. Oh, it looks like Jess is doing the readathon. That sounds like a literal best time oh, in the world. Yes, I'm on ghost tours, so the best one. <laughs> awesome. All right, y'all. Well, we're gonna call it a night. Uh, Sav, thank you so much for reading along with me this month and for joining me uh, as a co-host. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me, and thanks for being on my book club too. It was so much of fun. Course. All right, y'all. Well, everyone else, enjoy the rest of your Sunday night, or if you're rewatching it, enjoy the rest of your day. And um, take it easy. Don't forget to read Riley. And goodbye.